So, how are you going to avoid getting ripped off? Well, I think that you've got to find someone, like the guy who runs this store, who'll tell you about value for money. How can you get sufficiently good wine that you can put it on display to sell it at those kind of prices? What's the trick? What have you learned? Well, this real estate's very valuable. These are the high turnover wines, the wines People that People come I in sell. and they immediately look here. Exactly, and the, particularly the locals and a lot of the tourists have learned this is where the deals are. So this is valued real estate, and the various wine uh, salespeople compete for this space. So when a spot comes open, who's got the deal? Oh, really? <laughs> now, is it true that some of the big vineyards are putting out wines that are really extremely good, they don't want to drop their big price, so they produce a sort of, what do you call it, a second wine? Yeah, perfect example over Where? here. Uh, this man is known for his Chardonnay. Yeah. He does a beautiful, beautiful job. Won medals across the board. But he's concerned about reducing the perceived value of his label, so he created a second label. So what's the first label cost? First label is twenty-seven dollars at retail. This is fifteen. Fifteen, and they're very good Chardonnays. So it's thirteen dollars cheaper, and the difference is tiny. For the average palate, I think it would be negligible. Really, very good. Above that, there's been a surplus of grapes in California, so now there's. Um, there's more opportunities to buy less expensive wine. Okay, so this is proving the point that we're trying to make in the program that if you shop around, you can get terrific wines and you do not have to pay exactly. a packet for them. There are great wines out there now at good prices. Once you've bought your wine, you need to know how to store and serve it. So I asked a couple of experts to dinner. Hi, ladies. Can I introduce Frank? Frank. This is Frank. Alice Fable. Welcome. Good to meet you. And this is Christy from a rather Hello. fine to restaurant meet you. in San Francisco. She's a melee. So uh, why don't we start you guys off? I'll ask you to open that. Frank, why don't you open okay. that? Now, while you're doing that, tell me first of all about temperature. Somebody once said to me that we make a mistake of drinking white wines much too cold. Christy, do you agree with that? I do agree with that. We say often take your wines out of the refrigerator, open them up, put them on the table, and let them warm up a little bit. Unless, of course, they're a light, crisp white wine, then they're better a little bit colder. Is that right? So when it's a rich, complex wine, you want it to have a, just a little, I won't say warmer, but not so cold. Exactly. All right. Frank, tell me about this, uh, the right temperature for red wine. Well, reds you want to drink at room temperature, just a little bit below, maybe. Um, now, somebody said to me not so long ago that when they used to talk about room temperature, it was room temperature like in 1800, before right. they had central heating. Right. So we're really drinking a lot of reds quite a lot warmer than they should right. be. Drinking. Room temperature yep. should not be 70, 75 degrees. Room temperature should be 60, 65 degrees. Okay. Now the next thing is this business about letting a wine breathe. Is there a general rule? There's not. The best thing to do is talk to your retailer, your sommelier, find somebody that's knowledgeable enough that you can ring up. But if you're eating at home? I get the phone calls all the time that tonight we're going to be drinking such and such a wine. How long do you think we need to give it? It happens really? all the time. So you're getting calls on individual bottles. How long do we give this? All the time. It's Alice, would you take Frank's number off? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, what happens if there's something wrong with the wine? Because that does happen sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's ask our sommelier first. One of the most common problems is corkiness or a corked wine caused by a, a faulty cork or a harmless um, bacteria in the cork which causes a chemical reaction with the wine which just makes the so wine... So the cork reacts with the wine exactly. so that it smells, tastes... Off, musty, funky, moldy. Okay, so I want to bring up one other thing which I think is very uh, fascinating but I don't get it. And that is that some people say that drinking a wine out of a different glass really affects the flavor of the wine in your mouth. Absolutely. True? The yes? same wine in seven different glasses will taste seven different ways. Come on. Absolutely. It's the way it hits your mouth, the shape of the the shape and size 
of the opening of the glass will introduce it to your mouth in different ways, and different wines do benefit from being introduced to your mouth different ways. Really? So, I mean, most of us do not want to buy, um, what do you say, seven different glasses you right. mentioned, <laughs> but what do we actually need? Christy? I think everyone needs to have, you know, flutes and a great all-purpose glass such as the one you have in your hand. So if you right. didn't have very much money, if I were going to buy one glass, I should buy that one. I think so, yeah. yes. It's on your own, one of those. All right, absolutely That's great. I think we should get on, get on with it now, don't you? I Christy, get pouring. Come on. Okay. Let's taste some. Come words. on, come on, woman. Let's taste some. So to sum up, this is what I've learned in the last few days. First of all, know what you like and don't let anyone try to tell you what you ought to like. As Christy put it to me, trust your palate. Secondly. Try to learn some quite accurate words that describe the taste of the kind of wines that you like. Then you can get some more of them. And thirdly, and almost the most important, I think, try and find a local wine shop where you like and trust the people and then go in there and discuss wine with them. And don't think that they're going to be snotty and try and intimidate you because the bottom line is they want your business. And finally, oh yes, enjoy. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. Some of the sound of it, I'd say, a 1902 Venezuelan Sauvignon Blanc with brown sugar in it. <laughs>